okay, you had a you had a topic suggestion you wanted to discuss. What was it? So we can talk about self defense and especially about uh, self defense against knife. Example, <laughs> this topic is really interesting and controversial. 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 <laughs> yeah. I, I have a very like dry opinion about it. It's black or white for me. Yeah. Before we get like into it, for me there is no there's okay. First about self defense, you do not learn self defense. You learn yeah. how to fight. Yes. <laughs> and also, uh, okay. Well. There's more I have to say about it, but just dry opinion. Number two is about the knife defense, which is Chris, the craziest stuff like, oh, in this fighting community, martial arts community, the most stupid thing is the knife defense. There is no such thing as knife defense. This does not yeah. exist. You it's can too maybe... Fast to, you can, when you see knife, it's already too late. <laughs> yeah. uh, all you can do is try to survive. If you're lucky, you will survive. There is no yeah. such thing as knife defense. This, people teaching knife defense is ridiculous. If I have to teach someone knife defense, I'll tell them, look, run away. That's it. Or the only way you can defend against a knife is if you ha also have a weapon. It can be a stick or... Yeah, longer than knife. <laughs> yeah, it has to be something that's going to keep him away from you. Yeah. Anyway, this is a very complicated subject. But yeah, you can, you can talk about it to give me your opinion. Yeah, my opinion is exactly the same. Like, it's something like self defense against knife doesn't exist. And in my opinion, the people who make a seminars of self defense, example, like weekend with self defense, example, and they show in the uh, some self defense against knife. I think these people should get some punishment or something because, you know. Yeah, human, humans are stupid pro by nature. So if you tell them that now you can survive because you know this technique, they're going to think like this. Yeah. And they're just going to get killed because they believe that, okay, I was on this weekend with self-defense, so now I know how to survive. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> all, they all of to these... To do this. Yes. Just, yeah. It's uh, regarding all type of seminars. People don't understand what a seminar is for. A seminar is when you already practice a martial art or a combat sport. A seminar is like a short training camp where you get some ideas and... Yeah, you can exchange ideas with yeah, another. Ideas and train with other people you're not usually training with. That's yeah. it. You're not going there to like learn everything and become a fighter from just doing... Even if you went to seminars every weekend, this is yeah. not training. This is bullshit. It's not training. Seminars do not work for developing skills. They only work for getting ideas. And if you go to a technical seminar, uh, refining some techniques, things like this. This yeah. is all of the seminars I've been to where I've been to a lot of seminars, but they're not the self-defense bullshit. They're always like technical seminars where you talk about techniques and, and things how to, you should improve and they show you like... Some strategy in the yes. fight, something like this. You go with knowledge and they give you some little tips and things that you have to work on. Or I, I also went to a WACO, kick, you know, the World Kickboxing yeah. uh, Seminar, which was simply some champions uh, from different types of kickboxing were explaining the rules and some exercises. That's it. That's a seminar. It's not, your, I go to a self-defense seminar and I can fight in the street, especially yeah. for people who have no skill or training. A lot of people think they will go to a seminar or two or three days. Of, like, and they're going to know how yeah. to... And after that, they're fighters. This is bullshit. Yeah. This is complete yeah. bullshit. Like, DK, you know DKU, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, yes. yeah, this, this, this DK, Kema Jeet Kune Do guy. Yeah. <laughs> like you say, he should be punished. This asshole does not... He doesn't have classes. All he does is seminars. How can mm. you just do seminars and not be... Like, he's not a real teacher. He just does seminars to get some money and... Yeah. What do people get from the seminars? I don't know. Make cool videos on YouTube so people think that he's like a god. <laughs> yes. <but laughs> Untouchable. It's, yes. It's just nonsense. It's like a like it is parlor of tricks. Yeah. yeah you don't really learn anything from just going to seminars. I'm actually, mm -hmm. actually about the, this uh, self-defense against knives, I know the story from my ex-teacher. Uh, he was also he was 
like in he worked in military and his friend he was a guy who teach another guys how to protect yourself against the knife and you never guess how he died <laughs> because yeah, of I knife have, i have an idea yes yeah because of knife so <laughs> the guy who teach another people how to survive in this kind of situation and he probably knew all the tactics all magic tricks mm -hmm. and yeah so this kind of things i think should be not allowed to teach in this kind of seminars like for people who never train anything before of course this kind of seminar could be like this but without making this uh, specialized techniques mm -hmm. that can just can give you tips how to i don't know escape <laughs> or just look out for your uh, org like the biggest organs yeah, your vital organs. organs and like yeah, yeah. actually it's important. So I, yeah yeah like I, we were talking about this off camera the other day. Uh, okay, and I learned this when I was really young. I was talking about knife fighting with my father. And he told me, look, everything you see in movies is bullshit. What you should do is if, if you're ever in the street and someone has a knife and you cannot run away, you grab your jacket or whatever you have and you like wrap it around your arm and use it as a shield. Yeah. If you have a belt, take off the belt, use that as a weapon. And this, he told me, just comes from, in, in Argentina, we have... Uh, something called the gauchos, mm. which was in the colonial times when the Europeans came to colonize uh, South America. The people working in the countryside in Argentina were gauchos. It's like cowboys, but the Argentinian version, okay? Mm. And there were a lot of Aboriginal like uh, people in the border with Chile. There was many like what you would call Indians, Aborigines. Mm -hmm. And they would like come and fight to kill each other to get the, the cows and everything. So they actually knew how to fight with knives. They had a lot of knife fights. So yeah. there's actually people who keep the tradition alive. I'm going to see if I can find a video of this to show you. But gaucho knife fighting is based on, they had a poncho, which is like for the cold weather, a very thick. Have you ever seen Mexicans? They have something similar, like the typical Mexican yeah, yeah, yeah. poncho. Like kind of, it's yeah. like, um, I forgot how you say it in English, like a blanket, but it's very thick. It's for yeah. cold yeah, they use this as a shield. They would wrap it around, use it as a shield, and then fight. It comes from there. That's like the the minimum you can do is just try to get something to protect yourself. But all this bullshit where you grab the guy's hand and like take it off and like kill him with his own knife and this is yeah. this is movie stuff. It's, it's just not, too too perfect to yeah, make this weird. <laughs> yeah, I've seen that a lot in Sistema and other like strange things. You, yeah. you need a weapon to fight the, with a weapon or at least some kind of shield or something. Sorry, keep, you were saying something before and I interrupted you. Uh, I don't remember. <laughs> I, 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 found, I found the... Let me see. I haven't seen this video, so I think this should be... Like, I just look for like... Ehrima Criolla, which would be... See, this is a very simple... They're just showing very simple idea of what, of what mm -hmm. it should be. Those are not actually the knives that the gaucho used. The gaucho knives were really big. And we still use well, them for like barbecues here, yeah. But this is the idea, using something to protect yourself as a shield. Yeah, you can also use just backpack or something yes. what you have with you. Exactly. But that that's the idea. See, they would just wrap this. And they can also use this. The poncho was kind of heavy. I, I was going to say that. They can also use that like to, mm. to get on your face and stuff like that. But this is more or less the, the traditional way that the Argentinian cowboys used to fight with knives, the gauchos. Yeah, this looks interesting. Actually. Yeah. So some people keep this tradition alive still in Argentina. They, they teach you a little bit. But yeah, you need, it's not just like you're, you have nothing and you take a guy's knife. This is bullshit. Even this, if you fight like this, you're still going to get cut. If yeah. there are knives, people are going to get cut. It's impossible. You're not going to go out to there like perfect. You're going to bleed. Knives are extremely dangerous. Yeah, because they are so small and so fast. This technique, normal punches with hands. When you yeah. make like even just friendly, sp sp like touch sparring with your friend, you always he going to touch you. Yeah. So the same. Just put knife inside. In and your the hand. knife, a don't punch. Touch a punch. You needed to do like heavy contact and like. Full. A knife. You just need to like touch a guy like this. It's cut. Yeah. The knife is sharp. You just need to like touch a little bit. You can go really fast like this, and you you cut them. It's it's almost and impossible. My, actually, my this extraordinary he also said that the skilled knife fighter. I don't know how to how I can call him. 
they always, when they make one strike, when they come back, they sliding. So they make like one move and this is like two cuts. Like one is like, he's yes. he stab you and later he uh, cut you. So that's, that's why like uh, all, most of the swords have always been designed with some curve yeah. so that you can slice when you take it out. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's the idea. So that it's not stuck. It doesn't stay inside. You can slice off. That's why they have the curve. So yeah, it's, but also, you know, when you see this knife defense, they always come like this. Like yeah. <laughs> really stupid, like it's kind of like with a uh, demonstration <laughs> like a, Aikido, like, yeah, like a robot, just all the body really stiff, move one arm and very slow. So yeah, of yeah. course I go like this. I block it. I take it off very easy. But in reality, no one will come like that. If they want to stab you and kill you, it's going to be really fast and they're going to throw many stabs. It's, it's yeah, exactly. Actually, actually I, saw, I saw some videos like some guy makes some, uh, uh, some I don't know, project. Like he asked people in the street if he can try to stab him or something. I, I don't remember who he was and because this was some time ago. And... Yeah, people, wait, when, example, you will give me knife and say, okay, try to stab me. And if you did it, I will give you money. <laughs> <laughs> I will just, uh, and, and he can protect himself. If I would like to kill him, like, like even in this scenario, mm -hmm. I would just run on him, like just try to press on him. Doesn't matter if he hit me one or two, two times. I can take these two punches, but if I start just run to him and just stabbing him, it doesn't matter. But in this, this in this in this movie on on YouTube, he these people because they don't know him, and I think they they try their best. They try to do some fencing stuff, you know, like because they yeah they uh, do this like a uh, training or some I don't know trial. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but if if you say like try to kill me. <laughs> I would just run on you with this knife. Yeah. I would but, not try to do some yeah. fancy stuff like a uh, also the, the like fancy uh, a normal person who never train anything, he's not gonna go like this. He's gonna try to cut you like this and stay away from you. Even if you don't know how to use a knife, people know like this cuts, so I'm gonna just keep this far and yeah. it's like a stick. Even if you don't know how to like fight with a bow, but you have a stick, you're gonna try to be far away and like it's it's just natural. It's, even an untrained person with a knife is extremely dangerous. So, yeah, I think it's it's like pre ways with, uh, with like, like like these knife fighters, mm -hmm. like guy who just like, get the knife and try to scare you that don't come closer to me. Mm -hmm. And you can see that this guy don't want to hurt you. He just don't won't allow you to hurt him. Yeah. <laughs> and second option is like he have a knife. The, that he, maybe he want to attack you or rape you or something. Yeah. Like he is like aggressive to you, but still he don't want to kill you. And first option is like he want to kill you. Yeah. And in this option is the most dangerous because he just going to yeah. run to you. And yeah, because about this, this, this things that somebody have a just knife to protect himself, not to attack somebody. Mm -hmm. uh, I know the story from my Taekwondo teacher <laughs> from his young uh, time. He, some, he told me like he was some, some kind of gang. He tried to, you know, you know, like in old time in Korea, <laughs> they tried to fight him. <laughs> and one guy took a knife and he said that he, when he was young, he was stupid because he didn't feel the fear in his head. And when he saw this guy with knife, he don't run away. He just ran to him and this guy, was afraid because he didn't expect this kind of reaction. <laughs> yes. So he dropped the knife and ran away <laughs> because he never just knife to, you know, like to scare people, yeah. not to kill people. Oh, he was and lucky. He was lucky. Yeah, yeah. And he said like he was stupid when he was young, but yeah, but it's, it's funny story that, yeah, <laughs> this, this can happen. <laughs> yeah. Mm. yeah. Well, yeah, uh, that's with knife, but the, the, any weapon defense, like guns, everything, it's all the same. If someone yeah. has a weapon just and you cannot run away, just forget it. It's very almost impossible you're going to get out of there alive. Unless you're like special military forces and you're trained every day 
Yeah. Like and those guys are trained. Like a tank. <laughs> yeah. It's the same thing, like I always say, with self defense. Self defense courses, they teach you some like uh, situation. Okay, this guy throws a hand, then I do like this, I block him, and then I counter. And uh, if he does this other thing, I do that. Like uh, some kind of formula. Yeah. Fighting is not like that, violence is not like that. It's different when you practice a martial art or a combat sport and spar every day. You learn to react to the movements of your uh, attacker and you learn to get hit because the average person, when they get punched in the face, they get shock. They fr they freeze or they get really scared and they paralyze. When well, this is what's happened a lot with Wing Chun guys. Yeah. So, like, or you can't even, you know, if you're not used to having, even if you have beautiful technique, if you're not used to having punches thrown to your face, your eyes will close, you'll flinch, you'll look like this. Yeah. It's just natural reflex. It's reflexes you have to train to change. So, yeah, you need to train sparring every day. That's the only way to learn self-defense or fighting. There is no self-defense. It's fighting. Yeah. And I then, see. Mm -hmm. It was some time ago... On Facebook, it was something about some MMA woman who beat up his opponent like on the street or something like this. And this is actually the best self-defense is just train martial arts. Yeah, <laughs> not, not, not train, not go for these courses. Yeah. Yeah, just, just fight. Yeah, self-defense courses is just quick cash grab. Yeah. It's like a business. It's, it's like I teach you how to drive a car by playing uh, Gran Turismo on the PlayStation. Yeah. It looks like you know how to drive, but you, when you put you in a real car, you don't know what, what the hell you're supposed to do there. You know, It doesn't matter yeah. if I play a, a flight simulator on my computer. If you put me on an airplane, I cannot pilot that shit. <laughs> you got to learn how to do the real thing. Yeah, exactly. But people really, this, this is a problem. Like you say, human, a lot of human beings are just naturally stupid. They honestly believe that they do this seminar or course yeah. and they can fight. Actually, I've seen it a lot. I see it all the time. People who go to Krav Maga or these kind of things. And they, I see how they train and it's like, mm -hmm. I don't know how to explain this, but it's really embarrassing what they're doing. They're, I look at this, they cannot, they do not have proper punching technique they don't know how to, they don't spar and when they try to spar it's like a mess it's like i know that I like this even on, okay. actually it's sorry i just want to say something i think it is worse to learn that than to not learn anything because yeah, because you believe that that you yes. can <laughs> and then you learn you learn bad habits you learn to do things the wrong way so when you go into a fight you have like the wrong set of skills that you're going to try to use where someone who never trained, he'll just try to use violence. And the guy who just tries to use violence and is not thinking will have an advantage. So yeah, sorry, exactly. go ahead. Uh, what were you going to say? We're talking about Krav Maga and the bad training. And no, no technique. And they don't spar. Um, what? So, you see, this oh, yeah, yeah, okay, 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 I got it. Uh, I saw some videos like when some self-defense specialists, they analyze some kind of fighting on the streets and was in this movie was some MMA guys who could not do something well because they was trained just trained like sports fight and they 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 this the self defense instructor said yeah he could not go out from the situation because he trained only fighting one opponent <laughs> blah 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 and it's just stupid because I think if you can fight with rules you can fight without rules too. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And the instructor, uh, the people who train self, just self-defense, I think if you put them to this MMA fight, they maybe they say, yeah, I want to put my my fingers to your eyes. I was going to yeah. tell them. And, and they train just putting on your forehead. And probably in the real situation, they have this habit to put this on your forehead, not on the eye. I, I, I can say that probably it's going to be like this because they train this habit all the time. Yeah. To the forehead, not to the but eyes. Actually, what I'm going to say, psychic. Yeah. That is difficult to put your fingers to somebody's eyes. Yeah, it but is, tell I, me this. We all know, everyone knows that if you put some your yeah. fingers into someone's eyes, you're going to hurt them. You don't need to train this. You know that. Yeah. But would you actually do that in a street fight? Would you put your fingers into someone's eyes? No, no, no. Oh, me neither. 
Only a psychopath does that. You have to yeah. be fucking crazy to try to do that. The normal person right. will never do that. So you go to these self-defense courses and you learn like, yes, put your fingers into the eyes or stab him with your pen in his neck and blah, blah, blah. No one is going to do that because you need to be psychotic to do that. Normal people will, they will like try and they will not be able to actually do that. Putting your fingers through someone's skull, through their eyes, it's traumatizing and insane. It's yeah. why would I want to do that? If I learn boxing, I just punch the guy in the chin and knock him out and that's over. And I didn't have to like go into someone's skull with my fingers. It's stupid. Like, <laughs> <clears throat> Again, all this <clears throat> the psychological training that in any case you would have to like train to be crazy if, if you yeah. want to do that. Or the thing is that with contact sports and MMA, martial arts, you are doing psychological training to be comfortable fighting. Yeah. So that's why you're going to have an advantage. The average person when they get into a street fight, it's normal. Even a trained person is going to get adrenaline. They're going to get nervous. The heart is going to start pounding and you're, you're going to have less oxygen, you're, it's going to be difficult. But at least if you're trained in sparring, you will have like good reflexes and you'll be able to think more clearly. The average person paralyzes. And you if see, you this is what I always say about martial arts. Like, it was a, what, what, you can, what do you learn from martial arts and if this can help you on the street? I, say, I think martial arts just give me that I can be maybe little bit less nervous <laughs> and I can have uh, some ideas what I can do <laughs> but on the street there's no rules so yeah it's, it's very random it's yeah very so I can just be maybe more calm than somebody yeah. who never fight before <laughs> yes and there's another mm -hmm. super yeah. important thing actually which is the physical conditioning mm. the, like uh, professional fighters will tell you it does Technique is really important, but the first person who gets tired loses. Yeah. And the average person who goes to these self-defense courses, they do not do any physical training. They just learn some drills and like movements, and then they think they're warriors. When you yeah. get into a street fight, you're going to be so nervous and tense that after just 30 seconds, you're going to run out of air. Have you ever seen like angry people fighting on the street? First of all, they throw like this, punches. Yeah. Never like in the exercises they do. They just throw random haymakers. And second of all, after 20 seconds, they're really tired. They can't even keep their hands up because they're nervous. They just make just five the swings. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and later, they're just like walking and trying to swing, but a little bit lower. <laughs> yes, exactly. So uh, another thing that training properly, regularly, martial arts or a sports, combat sport, you develop a lot of physical conditioning, stamina. So yeah, you do not learn how to f defend yourself with self-defense, that's bullshit. You learn how to fight by training regularly, not with seminars or any of that stuff. You gotta train two or three times a week regularly and have like good physical condition. Do sparring regularly also. Because for me, if you do a martial art but you do not do sparring, you're not a martial artist, you're just a gymnast. Yeah. But uh, I, I have a very just black and white opinion, you know. <laughs> About this, this, this self-defense and like putting fingers to your eyes and this <laughs> like, but actually, I also know, actually, a little bit strange, but I think it's nice story. Uh, that was one club in Poland when when they train Krav Maga, and they get some like difficult teenagers to go in there. But the the the, the small small things was in this this that they could be joined to this this club, but was one, but, and this but it was that you have to go one times per week to some uh, meeting with one priest, Ooh. who this is strange, but, and he teach you about philosophy, and sociology, that you can see the difference like to be you know this violence and be good to another person so this was this this this, this small hook that mm -hmm. yeah you can learn how to fight but you go here to uh, see the difference uh, like that you should not fight everyone <laughs> yeah 
this was actually straight up strange, but you have to do that you have to go to the priest and get this kind of sociology philosophy lesson. But I think this is kind of a good way for these difficult teenagers to yeah to make them more like less difficult. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, the thing is that when you train also, <clears throat> you know, the spiritual mental side of martial arts. Yeah. It's simply because you train regularly and you realize that you do not need to fight anyone to prove anything. Also, you release all your anger and stress in training. Like, those are the psychological benefits. You become mm -hmm. more calm when you're every day you're getting punched in the face and you're training hard. You stop being angry or yeah, you do not have like unnecessary aggression if you train properly, that is. Of course, there's always going to be bad and crazy people in the world, but for the average person, regular training helps you develop your mind. That's the spiritual side of martial arts. It's just mental conditioning from hard training. But also, no, if, you, if you see like professional boxers or MMA fighters, they always in the street, some crazy person tries to fight them and they never fight because they don't need to. They're, they don't care. You know, they don't get angry. You don't have to prove anything. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. if they had to, of course, if Mike Tyson had to fight someone in the street, he would punch him and rip his head off. So, because he's a trained fighter, you have to be trained. This self-defense, I tell everyone, don't go to, don't waste your time and money on self-defense courses. Don't do that shit. Just join to boxing or something. Do boxing yeah. or judo or something like, boxing you, you or judo, after just a few months, just two or three months, you can already apply some skills mm. if you have a good coach. Uh, yeah. This self-defense crap, you can do it for years and you're still, for me, it's absolutely useless, honestly. There's no value in the self-defense courses, but this is my opinion uh, from everything I've seen, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah you're right. <laughs> yeah. I know. I'm, I'm not to the like, master of all the truth. I'm just giving my opinion from my experience and what I've seen. Hmm. Yeah, I think it's the same. Like, this is just some kind of magic, like they try to give you all knowledge in the pill, like just, just, just eat it and you know everything. <laughs> yeah, like you said about the weapons thing, I think it should be just forbidden. I tell this to everyone out there who, who thinks of joining some course to learn knife defense. Forget about it. It's a bullshit. You can you can learn Escrima or Kali, which actually teaches you how to use a knife. But this self-defense bullshit where you have to disarm someone, uh, it's not going to happen. <laughs> Forget about it. You're going to get killed. Anyway, do you have any anything else to say about this? Actually, one thing is just like what I learned from my this ex coach. Uh, he sometimes he showed some stuff like of some from self-defense. Mm -hmm. What I have not always, not always see in the videos, and I think this should be always. He before he makes some kind of fancy locks, or some kind of like this police hold, holdings or something. He always make a shocker punch. Like example, oh, yeah, yeah. you punch something, and he just make a, like a snap in your nose or something like. Because if I just grab your arm, and I start trying to make some lock, you will not give me this. Yeah. Why I should give you my arm to make some lock? There will be resistance, make, yes. Yeah, and he just always, always, when he just grab my hand, second arm just going straight to my nose. So I have a, this, I have a, this, this one second for finish his lock. Yeah. And you don't often see this kind of things in the videos. They always just, okay, you make straight punch. So I start this, 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 and you're already laying on the ground and <laughs> yeah, stuff. Actually. Actually, what you're saying yeah, is key. I always say, look, these locks in Aikido and Hapkido, they work. You just need to know how to use them. You cannot right. just like grab his punch and do that. It's not going to work. Like you say, you need to have him distracted or weakened. Yeah. One of my friends, who's also a black belt in Taekwondo, he also practiced Aikido and Hapkido for a long time. I also practiced Aikido and Hapkido. And we talk about this many times that with good teachers, they will tell you, look, when you want to do like a wrist hold, you got to punch him first or do something either to weaken him or to distract him. The way we learned was simply just punch him in the face or punch him on the bicep or do something to weaken him for a second. And in that moment, you can apply. It's yeah, very difficult to, to do direct. You have to buy the seconds for yourself yeah. to finish your technique. Yes, you cannot just like do it out of no, that's the problem. Like it's training Aikido is grabbing a punch or out of nowhere. Like that's not gonna work like that. 
Yeah, it's exactly. also like even if I want to do grappling, I want to do a choke hold on you. You're not just going to stand there and let me walk around you and like grab you. You need yeah. to find a way to get into that position. It's the same thing. If you can find yourself in the situation where you where you can grab the guy's wrist and he cannot give you too much uh, resistance, then you can apply it. It does work. You just need to know how to use it, when to use it. But yeah, you're right. The, you need to like. Uh, distract him somehow it's like you know i showed you with the punch with the thing with the punch over here yeah, yeah you something like that. Right. some small thing like that will work on something that really bothers me always about this like self-defense crap or like some mar some martial arts they they have these like street movements same thing like fingers to the eyes or yeah. like to the throat or a, a punch the balls and thing this shit does not work in a fight you try to do fingers to the eyes, you're going to break your fingers. This is bullshit. It does not work like that. Yeah. It's like you're going to hit his forehead or some. You cannot jab finger, finger jab the eyes. The finger jab is the dumbest thing I've ever seen in any kind of like martial arts. Or, it doesn't work like that. You can, like you say, you can throw your hand just to make him like flinch. But yeah. if you try to put your, to a finger jab. Directly the test. It, yes, it's, you will break your fingers. <laughs> yeah, you will yeah. break your fingers. Just punch the guy. If you can reach with your hand, why don't you just punch him? It just makes yeah. no sense. Anyway, that's that's one of the things that really bother. Also, people don't just let you kick them in the balls. Yeah. Like in Kempo, they, they love kicking the balls. People do not let you kick them in the balls. And some guys, if you kick them in the balls, they just get more angry. So that's pretty dumb. Yeah. <laughs> Better to punch them in the jaw or on the liver or try to or low kick them or something like that. Yeah, or this throat. Actually, yeah. one accident, is, accidentally I hit my friend yeah. in, because he didn't put his chin down, and accidentally I hit his throat, and he was out yes. for for a few minutes because he need to breathe. <laughs> yes, that is a legitimate move, the hitting the throat. I've been hit in the throat too by accident. I you told me uh, last yes. time about this taekwondo. If, if you hit someone on the throat, when I if someone asks me, okay, teach me something that works in self defense, I always tell them like two or three moves that I, that I know will work and they're not fancy or strange. Just try to hit him, like uh, put your hand like this and try to hit him on the, it's the, okay, it would be reverse knife hand or just like, I don't know how to call this in English, but just try to hit him like, it doesn't require a lot of skill, just hit him on the front of the throat. Even if you do not hit them hard, they will not be able to breathe and you can run away or something. Or if they're grabbing you and it's like a really serious situation, you can grab the ear and pull. The ear, actually, you can rip it off. This is not very strong. It's very mm. weak. Yeah. You can just rip the ears off. This, this about the ears, I learned from a guy called Richard Grannon, who is like expert in, he worked as a bouncer in like the worst pubs in London. He wrote books about like street fighting and stuff. That guy knows a lot of stuff. And he, tell, he always says, look, if you want to fight and so if you need to learn how to defend yourself, you only need two things, boxing and judo. That's it. With boxing and judo, you can defend yourself. Of course, if you want to add more things to that, if you want to add low kicks and more complex things and you're good at it, that's better. You get more tools, more weapons. But the basic is boxing and some judo so that you're always standing up. And I agree with him. Kind of you know, it's some kind of like this judo and boxing is uh, like a tree and the rest is like the boundaries. Exactly. You can just add some boundaries extra. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So whenever, when, when, I, when he said that, I was like, oh, right, this is absolutely correct. You yeah. just want to stand up and like punching is the most efficient way to fight. I'm really comfortable with kicking, but it's after 27 years of training how to kick that I can throw a kick without effort. For the average person in the street, kicking is not a good idea. 